Wow, what a morning. I feel like a, it's all teed up perfectly. Tom Hill talks about his six different areas, spiritual, my favorite topic, second, physical, my second favorite topic. And then all of a sudden, Chris comes up and talks about your values and beliefs. And the next thing you know, Brett comes up and talks about going from walking around dead to walking around alive. So my message is done. It's easy. Get your spiritual house in order, get your values straight, and go to being a fully living person, and all of a sudden you'll do what you need to do to be well. So I've got a quiz for you this morning. Okay? Should you sleep or stay up all night? Sleep. Should you breathe or hold your breath? Breathe. Should you move or become an office potato? Move. Should you eat french fries or uh, salad? Salad. Should you drink Diet Coke or water? Water. So it's interesting that most people know what to do, but we don't do it. And we're in a state of healthcare crisis. We've got an obesity epidemic, and we've got a diabetic ed epidemic. But we don't talk a lot about, lot about is we have a depression epidemic. So I want to tell you a story about Rachel. And Rachel gave me permission to use her real name. I met Rachel on August 19th, 2010. In my real life, I'm a chiropractor wellness coach. And Rachel came in to see me, and she said, I've got hip pain. And as I'm dialoguing with her, like I do for a holistic approach, I said, OK. And then she said, I have Crohn's disease. She's 28 years old. And by the way, I've got depression and anxiety, and I really cannot stand my parents. She's 28 years old. So I do what I do and do the whole regular workup, do the chiropractic piece, and I do the x-rays, and I examine her. And I'll say, that'll be it. I'll see you tomorrow. She walks out, and I give her a little book to read called The Pathway to Personal Freedom and Love. Typically, don't give that the first visit, because if you didn't think I was a quack by then, you're for sure going to think it afterwards. <laughs> so um, back, uh, Rachel leaves my office, and she says, God, what a quack. And if you've been around the chiropractic world, that's a common nickname for us. And so she said, I'm not going back. So she gets on her phone, and she tries to get into another chiropractor to get her hip fixed. Lo and behold, it's too late in the day, so she can't get into somebody else. Mind you, I'm in Kansas City. There's 500 chiropractors. There's only about 60,000 around the world. Just like St. Louis, we're very blessed with lots of great chiropractors. So for some reason, she can't get in. So the next day, she shows up back at my office for my report of findings. And my report of findings, I want to share with her my ideas about what to do to get back to her whole authentic self. And you know, pain is just a byproduct of not being well in your body, in your mind, in your spirit. And so I'll fast forward the story. So I meet with Rachel, and um, I say, yeah, I can feel all the anger in your body. And she's like, wow, you really are a quack. Can't you just adjust my hip? That's what you guys do, right? <laughs> and yes, we do do that. But there's a reason that your body's in pain. It could be trauma. Most of the time, it's not. It could be the food you're fueling your body with, creating infl inflammation. And a lot of times, it's just the self-loathing and the hate you have for yourself or for other people. That emotion is just tied up in the cell memory. So I get on this journey with Becca, and she'd read the little book, blue book I gave her, Pathway to Personal, to Rachel. I get confusing names here. To Rachel is her real name. And she said, um, I read that little blue book you sent home with me, Pathway to Personal Freedom and Love. Tell me more about that because I am so angry with my mother. And I have a little bit of my own story with my mother, for those of you that have read my book. And so I, I get this. And I really believe that my journey has led me exactly to where I need to be, sitting at that moment with Rachel. And I'll say, yeah, I can feel a lot of anger in your body. And the emotion that goes with low back pain is anger and resentment. She said, really? I said, really? And I said, by the way, you want to start working on your Crohn's as well. And she said, I do. I'm taking 30 pills a day, 28 years old. And I'm visiting the hospital about every month in an emergency situation for some type of flare-up. So we start this journey together. And she allows me to come into her life and to just love her. Because once you can witness with somebody and start to love them, and they will open up to you, they will become committed. And I think that was another word that Chris used today. They will become committed 
to the journey because somebody else has believing eyes for you. So Rachel does the chiropractic care. She does the acupuncture care. And she starts doing a lot of things that somebody else can do for, for her. And that's the first six months or so. And then she goes and she does, spends eight days into a retreat to really start to fall in love with who she is. Because if you will start to fall in love with how amazing, I didn't like to call this machine, but this is the most amazing machine that's ever been made. And yet we take it for granted. We pour in the wrong food, we pour in the wrong thoughts, we sit all day long, we don't give it any emotion, and we expect it to work for us. So Rachel starts to get a little bit of emotion. She starts to heal some of the stuff with her mother and her father. And then she starts to eat the right foods. Another piece of the story is when I was sitting down with Rachel on day one, I said, you know, I want you to know if you really want to get well, it's going to take you 36 months. Wow, now all you want is my money, right? Because that's the other thing people think, chiropractors, we want your money and we're quacks. I said, I'm just telling you the truth. It didn't, your body didn't get this way in 30 days. It got this way over 28 years. Are you willing to invest 36 months in getting your life back? And she was able to feel my care for her. And so she said, yes. August 19th, 2010. Let's reel it for it. What's today? September 14th, 2013. By the way, it's my chiropractor. The reason I'm on this journey is birthday today. He's seven years old. So we'll make sure he gets a shout out. But going back to Rachel. So I talked to Rachel this morning. I said, now, now tell me what, what's happened again? Well... Number one, because the world cares about weight, right? So let me just get that out there. She's lost 50 pounds. It's been a slow process. If it goes off fast, it comes back on fast. It goes off slow, it stays off because you're committed to the lifestyle with it. So she's lost 50 pounds. She's gone from 30 pills a day to one. She's not been in the hospital in the last eight months. She no longer has medical bills. Guess what's really the most exciting part? She has a purpose. Her dream was to be a nurse as a little girl, but because she did not succeed at college her first time, in all the words that her negative committee was saying to her, she thought that dream was dead. She goes back to nursing school in January. She said, the biggest thing that's happened is I'm living my authentic life. I'm living my authentic life. She spent time with her family recently She's got a twin sister. I'm a twin as well, and so there's another connection. You know, God, you just can't make this stuff up, right? And her twin sister had twins. And she just spent time with her mother. And, and, and typically, every time before she was going to go sp spending time with her family, I would get an email from her. I'm supposed to leave tomorrow morning for Reno, no, Utah, Salt Lake City, and I don't want to go. I don't want to go see my family. And... So I ended up calling her, it'd be 8 o'clock at night. Okay, talk me through what's going on. And so we would go through some of those patterns that she was telling herself that maybe or maybe not were not true. And so the greatest thing is I've got this 28-year-old who's now 31 because she says, you know what? You love me. You weren't in judgment. And I think the reason that people are so stuck in some of their health habits is they just need somebody to love them so that they could be witnessed back how they can start to love themselves enough to do the things they know they could be doing, to live their authentic self so they have the right values and the right beliefs. And so that all of a sudden, we start to turn this world of depression and obesity and diabetes around into people that say, you know what, it's greater than me. It's really not about... Michelle, and it's not about Rachel, and it's not about Tom, and it's not about Gary. It's about you and I being our best selves so that as we walk into the room, we raise the vibration so some of the things that happen with intolerance and hate around our world stop because if you love yourself, there's no way you can harm another person. And so the point of my message is really, really simple. Small steps lead to big shifts. 
take time to fall in love with your magnificence and not from a self-centered way, but an investment so that your family and the people that you love will go back and make the world a better place like what Tom and Gary are doing in, in John O'Leary. Small change equals big shifts because inch by inch, wellness is essential. God bless you and please take care of yourself. It's the most amazing machine that's ever been made.